Ladies and gentlemen, Naomi Smalls. Put me on the cover of Vogue. But my legs were too long. Every day is leg day. Naomi Smalls is one of my favorite queens to ever grace the screens of RuPaul's Drag Race. Once thought to be a killer fashion queen with not much else to offer outside of that, seeing her come back for All Stars and absolutely excel at almost every challenge was a treat to watch. Naomi is an extremely smart queen who knew the weaknesses from her past and improved on them for a very solid placement both times she went on. I've loved her since season 8, and seeing her in All Stars and the Vegas Review helped just showcase how much she's fully grown into a realized superstar. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Acid Betty. Season 8 of Drag Race was one of the first seasons I was able to catch live. Now, I didn't consistently keep up with it because I was in like 7th grade, but one of the queens that caught my eye along with Naomi, Kim, and Bob was Acid Betty. Betty represented an aesthetic for me that I was just starting to get into. A very alternative form of drag that took a lot of inspiration from traditional queens but twisted it into a unique form of artistry. When I tuned into the later episodes of the season, seeing the absence of Betty, I was disappointed and a little confused because it seemed like we got to know her really well. And now looking back years later on the season, I don't think it was a mistake that we got a high dosage of Acid Betty. I really believe that they wanted to push her beyond her placement, but there was one queen standing in the way, causing a commotion, if you will. So I want to take us back in time where Naomi was thought to only be a fashion queen, a young artist coming into the competition with nothing more than a nice closet and a great pair of legs. At least that's what's presented to us in the first half of season eight. <laughs> If I'm going to be completely honest, I hate the term filler queen. I don't think a single queen is cast on RuPaul's Drag Race just to get eliminated or fluff out the cast. I think casting may decide to put a queen on too early or cast a queen with potential but don't know how to utilize it with other queens on the season, but at most, a queen can be under-edited to remove any presence that they may have on the show and this was lightly done to Naomi. Comparing Naomi to other queens who made it far, people like Derek, Chi Chi, and even Robbie Turner had a decent amount of narrative focus from the start. Don't get me wrong, Naomi was present in the edit, but where other queens really showed their personality, Naomi instead took on the role of asking other queens questions and then talking about other queens and confessionals. This is great for screen time, only if the editors are showing your personality in other aspects. However, this did not happen with Naomi. Looking back on the season to see how little there was of Naomi outside of small confessionals is mind-blowing when taking into account her top three placement. Naomi in the edit for the first three episodes especially of season 8 served more to move story beats along for each episode, but she did not really create any story for herself. Now if you really want an example of someone who was under-edited the whole season, look no further than Dax! Exclamation point. Dax is a really interesting queen to watch off the show, but if you forgot they were even on the show, I wouldn't blame you. If I'm counting correctly, Dax was given a single confessional in the first episode, that being her entrance. The only time we see any content with her in the next episode is when they're setting up her elimination. With this being said, it's clear production and the editors had an idea of what they wanted to do with Naomi on the season, but like I said earlier, Dax was unfortunately lost in the sea of other queens so her potential was wasted. Naomi is not a filler queen. She was cast to be the young fashion queen of the season, an archetype that I want to do a video on in the future. What you need to know right now is that the producers were likely looking for her to give some great looks and possibly clash with the older queens, which is what we saw a lot on season 7. I mean, it's very clear from the first episode that's the archetype that she was cast as, because Violet herself even gives Naomi a minor stamp of approval. Naomi Smalls looks really hot. She has a great ass, great legs, but she does have cliffhangers. You see her toes, like, literally clinging onto the shoe. Boner killer. But when Naomi walks in and is a soft-spoken, observant, and mostly sweet queen, there isn't a lot they wanted to do with her. Obviously, she could have still been pushed early on if it wasn't for another queen holding a lot of the spotlight. Acid Betty ruled the edit for almost every episode she was in. Not to mention placing high for the first three weeks, giving the viewer the impression she was gonna go super far. Betty was a really interesting queen to watch throughout her time on the show because of her personality. The name Bitter Betty would be very fitting to use. I know Acid Betty very well. Lord, it's gonna be this shit show. She's gonna be a lot. She's gonna be extra. Oh, really? But honestly, I can't blame her for acting in the way she did a lot of the time. She was controlling, no doubt, but it stemmed from a place of wanting to win through intense focus on the task at hand. 
She comes off very bitchy, because she was, but I'm not gonna fault her for taking things seriously and trying to win, because it worked for her for the first three weeks. Betty was set up to be the villain of the season, but it was gonna be a little different for her compared to past villains because she kind of had bad blood with everyone. It was clear she would not hesitate to throw someone under a bus. Well, at least you'll be nice about it, though. Cause she gonna throw me under the bus. Fuck yeah, I'll be honest as fuck. She what was, did I do? You were like, at least I can lip sync for myself. I know it's gonna be all bad. That's what you did. But she wasn't void of heartfelt or even fun moments on the show. She wanted to present herself and her art in a certain way to the judges, and if someone got in the way of that, she wouldn't have it. Her extreme drive to win came off as bitter to the other girls, causing a rift between them, but I don't think they can fault her at all. You know, Betty, she's so obsessed with being respected yeah. that there, there's a moment where everyone's like, it's like, I can see Betty holding up a shotgun and be like, everyone get back. We're all like, Betty, 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 no one's here to harm you. We're all your friends. And she's like, no one better be disrespecting me. <laughs> and we're like, Betty, we're going to walk away. Episode two gave us a bulk of the bitterness while at the same time attempting to set up a storyline between Betty and Chi Chi. The entire episode framed Betty being in full competition mode, scoffing at the idea of the group talking about something else other than the challenge. When Betty isn't in control, i.e. Chi Chi being team captain, she will attempt to take control or push the leader to do something in her way. This did not sit right with Chi Chi, and though Betty's influence was apparent, Chi Chi still came out on top. Betty was not happy about this. So here we have two large personalities with one taking the win over the other. This should be a really investing time in a storyline to watch over the season, right? Two amazing personalities going head to head with one kind of being an underdog and the other placing high a lot of the time, but then the underdog wins and all that. It was basically dropped after this. It was an extremely compelling storyline for the one episode that it was in, but aside from Betty making slight jabs toward Chi Chi and like Snatch Game, there wasn't a lot past this. I'm glad that they were able to put it past them, but it doesn't help the case for Betty on the show. Bitter with a drive to outdo another queen will always be more entertaining than bitter just for the sake of being bitter. And without this feud with Chi Chi, Betty unfortunately fell into the latter category. Adding to the strikes against further pushing Betty were new feuds popping up between Bob and Thorgy and Bob and Derek. The roles and storylines of the season were starting to be filled and without a proper storyline being set up, Betty was seen as more expendable than the rest. Don't get me wrong, the high placements meant something in the beginning because they really saw the artistry of Betty and they also saw her character and personality and thought they could push that further along. But with the feud with Chi Chi going basically nowhere, it gave them room to put her in the bottom, maybe striking a fire under her or just causing more drama. Her bottom placement was very justified because her snatch game was not good, but again, I don't think they saw her going home this early. And just to be sure, they threw Naomi in there who placed high last week, but aside from that, hasn't been doing too much. And honestly, you know, what's a fashion queen gonna do anyway in a lip sync? Just, you know, pose and, you know, what, what, what would she do? And in that moment, you will do whatever it takes to stay. This is one of my favorite lip syncs ever. There's no outstanding tricks, no stunts, no reveals. It's just a queen who understands the tone of a song completely. Naomi Smalls is one of the best lip syncers on RuPaul's Drag Race, all for the way she rides a song. She completely bodies any song that she's given, and anytime she is able to lip sync, it's honestly a treat to watch. So when she hits us with this first performance, I and many other people were shocked to see her dominate Betty in the way that she did. Betty was at a disadvantage for the outfit she was in, but had been shown to be a strong performer. So if Betty's performance was good, there would probably be justification for her to stay over Naomi if Naomi did around the same level. But no one could predict Naomi completely mopping the floor like this. The queens in the back were shocked by the outcome of the lip sync just because of the way Betty was performing in the competition. It was an upset on Drag Race that was so genuine and I really wish we could see more like that. Now, I'm not the first to come to this conclusion. The comment section of the lip sync has people talking about this topic and I'm just kind of here to spread it and add context around the analysis. One comment that I found super interesting was a person who compared Naomi to the fashion queens of season 7, I mean, obviously. Where almost all of the fashion queens went out on their first lip sync, Naomi subverted expectations and came out on top with this amazing performance. Also, another quick side note, the episode served as a very candid storyline for Naomi. The producers probably banked slightly on the fact that Naomi would struggle at Snatch Game, so when putting her in front of her two supermodel idols and then flopping, Naomi knew she needed to redeem herself. 
She was able to show her idols where she excelled after completely bombing something that she wasn't very experienced at. It's just really nice to see Naomi proving herself in some way to her idols, even though she didn't give a great performance in Snatch Game. Anyway, Betty's elimination was sudden, felt premature, but again, was justified. The only issue is that it was to a queen that received very little attention outside of her fashion. Now, the producers can take two routes with this. Either give Naomi the same amount of screen time and placements she's been getting for most of the season, or put her under a microscope to see where her true talents may lie and give her the attention that she hasn't been getting most of the season. And when they put her under this microscope to see how she would do, she completely blossomed. I talked in my last deep dive about Electra Shock and how she was given the edit of an underdog and performed as such. She slowly built up steam and started to dominate the competition, but the producers didn't see her as a winner, so they came up with a BS reason to get her out of the competition. Naomi is the opposite case of Electra Shock. Rue and the producers see her outperform one of their potential frontrunners, so as an adaptation, they make Naomi a frontrunner herself. Now, don't get me wrong, Naomi worked her ass off, she wasn't just handed a top 3 placement. It's just clear with the elimination of Betty that they were actually looking towards Naomi now for being a contender for the crown. After her lip sync, Naomi doesn't place below high on the season, which is kind of crazy. She is edited into the episodes a lot more, starts a mini feud with Derek, and is just overall praised for growing into a fierce competitor. Now, a few weeks ago, you were almost fading into the background. Right. But you came up from behind and just knocked him dead. Well, I'm actually kind of thankful that I was in the bottom too, because it literally lit a fire underneath my ass. This is what I want to do, and I should just fucking bring it every single time. I don't think the producers expected Naomi to grow in the way that she did, but expectations are different than wants. The producers didn't expect Naomi to grow, but that doesn't mean they didn't want her to grow. Down Under producers didn't expect Electra to grow, and they also didn't want her to grow either. Naomi's trajectory on the season shows that a bad first leg shouldn't define a queen as who they are. She was able to bounce back after faltering, giving us three standout performances in various challenges. And again, we were able to get this because the producers were willing to adapt. Naomi did very little to establish storylines early in the season, unlike Acid Betty. However, when faced with the decision to keep the obviously better performer over the better contender at that point in the season, the producers and Brew went for broke and chose Naomi. And then she dominated the rest of the competition, earning a spot in top three and a strong legacy that persisted through All Stars and beyond. Listen, I can't deny this may have hurt season eight in the long run as a piece of television. A common complaint of the season is the lack of drama aside from Derek just kind of bickering with everyone, and without a bitter Betty, there wasn't much that could be done. I still absolutely adore the top four, even though there was no strong narrative between any of them. It just felt like four really strong queens that earned their spot to be there individually, but didn't have a lot to do or say with each other. Thinking it over though, I do appreciate that it's just a very positive season overall, and I think I'd take that over a juicy feud any day. The moral of this deep dive is that producers need to be opening to changing their top picks nowadays. You never know the strengths of a queen until they perform in a challenge. So if someone outperforms another person in a lip sync, don't overproduce the show and save the person who's been doing better, unless it's like, I guess Simone? <laughs> I don't know. Obviously there's a time and place where certain queens need to be saved for lip syncs because they may have not performed the best in the lip sync, but they're performing great in the competition. But when someone isn't given a chance like Naomi was in the first couple episodes of season eight, seeing her fully blossom after it when she was given a chance shows that any queen can do really well. I guess another small example that I can point to is Tia Coffee and Estina on UK series two. It's a little different because Tia was shown to be a very entertaining personality, but Astina was coming off of a win and a safe performance while Tia was kind of struggling in the competition. So when Tia gives an arguably better performance in the lip sync and is then saved for it, we kind of see her blossom a little more, but not completely. She was at least able to blossom in the sense that she was one of the standout personalities from the season and basically my favorite queen of UK2. Look at that gorgeous body. You could wear anything. Bitch. <laughs> Are you cinched? No, I just have a really fat ass. <laughs> all in all, you never really know where someone's true talents may lie, so you should never really judge someone based off of the first couple episodes of the show. There are no filler queens, and we shouldn't treat anyone that way, unless you're Joey J, I guess. Thank you guys for watching. Please, again, don't send hate to any queen in the video. Remember, it's easy to hate, but it's a lot more fun to spread love. Have a happy holiday for whatever you celebrate, and finally, rest in peace, Chi Chi Devane. You're missed more and more every day.